Greetings and welcome back to my desk for another build of a fresh model kit. Uh, this time there was un unexpectedly uh, in my local modelers group, local group, actually it's just a group on Facebook, we never actually met, but a group of Icelandic modelers on Facebook, uh, unexpectedly the admin came up with a group build for us to do and do this summer, basically we have two months we gotta be finished by August the 1st but we're gonna build European cars because well this modeling group is mainly about car models but I have a bunch of European cars in my stash but I pulled this guy out the Volvo 240 Turbo the touring car version from BMAX, Aoshima, BMAX, whatever um, Pull this particular guy out because it's European, made in Sweden, of course, as everybody should know, I guess. Uh, but anyways, pull this out because actually, just a few months ago, I think it was a couple of months ago, uh, I was in Sweden visiting a Volvo factory, and I got to go to the Volvo Museum where I saw one of these awesome machines in the flesh. So, I've been wanting to do a model kit of the, not that box art, Kimachi, Yasaki City, whatever this is, because I, this might be a famous car to me, but I really don't know, because I'm in, kind of in Europe, so, uh, I went online and I got these aftermarket decal set from Ray model, Ray G model, uh, of spot model. But for this Nordica European Touring Car Champion winner of 1986, because as you can see in this picture right here, I got to see one of these Nordica sponsored vehicles in the museum. So I want to do a build of it. But that's a long enough introduction. I'm not really going to go through the box, but we have a pretty well molded body, which I've already seen is not totally accurate compared to the actual thing. It's missing some holes in the back here. And I'm not quite sure, because I don't have the photo ed set for it. But I think the photo ed, photo ed set tells you to, do, to drill holes here, where it looks like it has injection pin marks in there. Actually, I can just open this up because I'm going to spend my evening getting rid of mold lines, I guess. But it looks like it has injection pin marks in there. In here, but I think, I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure, I could be talking out of my ass here as I usually do. You, If you get the PE set, you got to drill these out and put in the, the refueling stuff or whatever that is, the holes. And also this area here should be re recessed for the shutoff uh, things for the electrical and I think the, the other stuff, the emergency stuff, but yeah. Anyways, it's a pretty good looking uh, body of a Volvo 240 coupe two-door version. Uh, let's go quickly through the box. We've got some excellent looking clear parts. We have a chrome sprue with the light backings. It looks like a bit heavy chrome. But we'll see how that turns out. We also have some wheels. Now these are actually molded with the wires uh, open. But the chrome has gone into a few holes. So you've got to drill those out. And I will be doing that. Also, we have to paint the center's gold, I think, for the vehicle that I'm doing. Got racing slicks with poly caps. One big sprue with the chassis and the interior top, door cards. There's a seat, basic looking seat, rear bumper, dashboard. Are you seeing this front bumper? Grill piece, actually. 
good looking grill piece. Open up, opened up grill and stuff. Of course there's no engine in this. Because there usually isn't. But, still looks good to me. And then we have a second bit of plastic with some brake discs, some ducts, a suspension, a steering wheel, some more suspension, and the roll cage. And we have a decal sheet, which I'm not going to be pulling out because I want to keep those for whatever other race car I might do in the future. But I have metal, one of these metal stickers for the Volvo emblem in the grill. Grill. I can't speak anymore. But you can build, I think, three different cars from from the kit supplied decals. Even four. We got one. We got two. We got twenty-one. We got twenty. Yeah, twenty-one, twenty, one, two. So four different vehicles it look it looks like. And you got full color callouts. I love these. I love these how they do this. So you get for this, maybe the two and the one is for a twenty-one, I don't know. I'm stupid. This is the number one car, the race winner, and this is a 1985 Intertech winner. Again, I don't really know these races. But we have the instruction manual, and I'm just gonna have a quick peek. I think they also include the photo ads instructions in here. I wanna make sure uh, it was not talking out of my ass with, uh, with the stuff I told you about drilling into the back there. And who knows, maybe they got plastic parts for it too. I don't know. Because it actually looks like they do. So they have four marked holes on the inside there, depending on which car you're doing, you have to open up the holes. I happen to have, had, have brought my camera when I saw the real thing, so I can just look at those brilliant, brilliant reference pictures that I took to see which holes I need to open up. But if you buy this kit and you go for the PE set, I think it's going to be a worthwhile investment because it really does make the model look great, I think, even though I've not built it. But I did get the BMAX Audi as well, the, the uh, Group 5, Group 5, Group Rally, Group B Rally, <laughs> Audi uh, Quattro. And I did go for the PE set for that, so... That looks great. But anyways, I'm gonna uh, do some stuff and hop right to it. Gonna figure out if this has any mold lines, which it probably does, but man, there's a little bit up here. Um, a little bit here. But we're gonna mark those off with a Sharpie and sand them off and prep this body for paint. Although I kinda wanna do the interior first. Just to get a little bit of a hang of uh, spraying white and seeing how I can manage that with my brand new, my brand new, yes, kind of showing off here, but I got myself a Badger Velocity from the, from their annual like birthday deal bash thing. If you know about that, if, or if you don't know about that, it's when the, I think he's the CEO, like the president of Badger, has his birthday in, I need to clean it up a little bit from using it, but when the president, president of Badger has a birthday in January, he has started making these incredible deals, so I snagged this up for 55 United States dollars. So I recommend if you follow Badger on Facebook uh, to keep your eyes open next January, I guess, for to see if they have another crazy deal like that. So it's a Badger Renegade Velocity 0 0.2, 0 0.021 needle or something. Uh, I, I'm still learning this airbrush stuff, but anyways, I'm gonna hop to the build. Stay tuned. 
Uh, so, I scuffed up the entire body, I sanded off the the few mold lines that were there were there uh, there were just some little ones along the roof line a little bit among along the uh, panel gaps here and here and these ones I didn't sand that much because we were gonna put bumpers over those but I also cut in the holes according to the reference pictures that I got turns out also <laughs> when I was looking at my reference pictures, I'm currently on this computer screen that's right there behind the camera watching a review of the 1986 European Touring Car Championship season. Turns out my reference pictures uh, are not that good because the car that I saw has been repainted and redone probably many times so the roll cage in my reference pictures is a light blue color when it's supposed to be white as per the 1986 car so I'll be using the uh, my pictures for light reference and when I need to be sure I'm going to put on the the YouTube videos of the actual races because you see a lot in those especially in the pit maneuver pit maneuvers in the in the pits and stuff but Anyways, I'm going to attack the interior next. I'm not going to go ahead and paint this straight away because I got my doubts about spraying white with my new airbrush or just spraying white in general. So I cut out the interior tub and we got a primer that and then painted white. I bought a fresh pot of game color dead white for this. Hoping it's not going to splutter around like white usually does for me. And we're going to do the roll cage at the same time, I guess. So I got to start, start off by cutting that out. And I've noticed with this kit that it has a lot of ejection pin marks all over the place. Luckily most of them won't be seen. But like on the back of the seat. Uh... It's just riddled with, <laughs> with ejection, ejection pin marks. So it's kind of annoying, but I'll see what I can do about that. A lot of cleanup required in those those areas. Other than that, I am I think this is gonna look real nice. But it's fun looking at the review stuff, like the interviews with the drivers from, from 1986. They're talking about aerodynamics and such in the other cars. And uh, one guy's saying that the Volvos, they're like bricks, so they shouldn't go that fast. And the Rover driver is talking about how fast his car is going in a straight line. And all that kind of stuff. Nobody's actually talking about the Volvos like they can do anything. but. <laughs> They actually dominated the entire season in the two Volvos. And the mo one of the most fun parts about it is that, uh, although I'm no expert on this matter, I, of course, when 1986 I was only two years old, but um, it looks like Volvo team did not give that many team orders for car number two to give way for to car number one. So they have a lot of internal like fighting, but it looks like it's all in like goodwill and stuff. So they're just having fun. It's just a few blokes having fun on the track. <laughs> so it's quite fun actually uh, to watch the interviews with the guys. And I highly recommend if you're into into touring cars racing or stock car racing, for that matter, uh, to check out these videos on on the YouTube's. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna cle finish cleaning this stuff up and come back with the assembly. Okay, so I have this, uh, the roll case loosely fitted in there. There were quite some, a few mold lines to, to, to clean up there, but it's in place. So I'm gonna come in with uh, some Tamiya Extra Thin. 
tab on the corners. I'm using the interior the interior plate as a a jig sort of to have it keep it all square and correct. There's even uh, a little twist in this corner, so this little bar here is actually uh, kind of pressured to be in the down position. It doesn't want to be that way, but we'll make the best of a bad situation, I guess. I guess it's okay for it to pop up like that, as long as everything else is squared up. Putting the tape on to keep it, keep it, uh, keep it under pressure a little bit. But like I said, this this little bar here does not want to be down there. But once it has some glue on it, it's not going to be a problem. I'm not going to glue it straight away though, because I'm going to take the cage out, paint it separately. Of course, there's no interior in this thing yet, so. Let this set to dry, and I think once that's dry, I can go ahead and uh, shoot it with primer and paint, probably too. So, painting the uh, roll cage, I sort of kind of realized maybe I should have painted this thing beforehand because getting inside all the pipes and getting every single side of every pipe is really, really hard to do with it all assembled like this. So maybe next time when I do a race car build I'll Go ahead and do that, but probably not. Probably just go through this again if I know myself. So, one thing about this new batch of airbrush that I don't like is this two prongs there. Uh, the way I airbrush my style or whatever, I uh, find it kind of hard to get used to. But anyways, I'm going to keep on airbrushing and finish these things off. Okay, so, real quick before the camera runs out of batteries, I'm adding texture to the seats to the one seat much like I did with my Subaru Impreza build back in the day if anybody remembers that by adding some Tamiya soup extra thin and dabbing it with a piece of tissue paper get like a Alcantara texture or whatever kind of texture of the material of the seat and it's alright if if a little bit of tissue paper gets stuck like that it just adds to the effect, in my opinion. So I'm gonna keep on doing this, and I'm gonna recharge my camera battery. And if I get a little bit too much, it's just peel it away. No biggie.
sliding it down maybe with my finger and yeah so like I said earlier and excuse me I have seemed to have come down with some sort of flu or something so it might sound a bit off but like I was saying earlier uh, there's a plethora of uh, ejection pin marks on the back of the seat here uh, six to be exact the worst ones being these on top of the headrest there but probably gonna be extremely visible once the model is done so I'm going to have to figure out a way because it's kind of an awkward shape not to drop it on the floor though uh, since it's such an awkward shape uh, I need to fill those in and try and get the thing smooth again it does appear they did not want this thing to be stuck in the mold but I got my perfect plastic putty here which the label came off or maybe perhaps I took it off and I'm gonna smush a little bit in there and it's water soluble so I'm hoping that I'll be able to clean this up with a wet cotton bud at a later date at a later date so yeah I'm going to apply this with a toothpick but here's a little tip for you you can get these plastic uh, air artist knives I guess painting painting knives whatever this is called Paint, painters knife I think and these are extremely good for applying uh, putty like a mason <laughs> would I guess but I'm gonna remove what's dried on the tip I'm gonna make a mess of this. I just know I am. I don't have any tissue paper. I have tissue paper. I need an extrem extremely small amount, I guess, at a time. Now you could also thin this out with water and go from there, but we're gonna do this like this this time. I'm doing the bottom holes first because I'm kind of doing it as practice it's to kind of gauge how much I need for the top holes. Like I said, it's a bit of an awkward shape because they're like recessed in there. And then we also have the, the cloth material there. Since I did not buy the photo etch set for this with uh, seat belts and stuff, um, so it looks kind of messy right now, but I'm gonna let it set for a little bit and then I'm gonna come in with a wet cotton bud. Yeah, since I don't have the photo etch seat belt kit with this. And the decals are the wrong color for this scheme. I'm going to attempt to make my own seat belts with just masking tape, I guess, and then maybe cut out the buckles from the decals and use the buckles on top. At, at the very least, we'll have some some seat belts going through there without buckles. We'll see. from the same hospital giving a full psychological profile on him and projecting these actions of his yay brother Adam you know I reach you you believe in what you seek but there is a tragic difference between what you want and what he wants you're making me cry there it is the 
Eden Brothers. Papa said they would. Our original course must have been somewhat in error. When will we get there? Try to persuade us to change course presently, and then they'll attack. Come on, you can stop. I cut off their life support. I have another weapon. Take control, Brother Raz. What are you doing? Making an adjustment on their circuits. And now. Okay, so <clears throat> you have a bunch of black parts before you, which is basically the entire interior parts along with this red fire extinguisher, which I have painted in a little dial there for. And I'm just gonna put it, go ahead and put some clear gloss inside all the dials here, like on here. There's a healthy dollop. You get a good, like, shiny lens over it. And you know, all the dials and the dash as well. Um, there were kit decals for these. It didn't come with the aftermarket set. So I just used those and they went on beautifully. Uh, the. The. Uh, Kit supply decal set comes with decals for the seat belts, but they're black. And besides that, I don't like to use the decals for seat belts because, well, I find it kind of kind of boring not to have the the seat belt going all the way back to where the it actually attaches in the body and uh, I'm gonna put a, a spot of gloss in the steering wheel center as well because usually these logos are shiny and it has a little Momo decal in there but yeah, uh, I'm gonna end the video here. We got all the parts kind of painted. I, I decided not to do any of that on camera or not talk about that at all, in fact, because it's like black with some different types of gloss. And I didn't do a very good job with the uh, ejection pin marks on the back of the driver's seat. So I kind of just gave up on that. So, yay me, I guess. But anyways, uh... We're gonna leave this at here. There's also a mirror that I did with some malt of liquid chrome. And we'll be back on the next one. Actually assembling the interior and making the seat belts and installing those, I guess. Or at least try to. Because I kick the camera around, sorry for that. Because uh yeah, like I was saying, uh never really done these big seat belts before with uh tape. So that'll be an experience. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this one. And keep on modeling, keep having fun, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.